Hello, everyone. Welcome to a, another, another session of the uh, Rural Insights podcast and video series. And today we're really excited to have two, two guys with us who are doing some really exciting things with film and, and documentaries. And I want to ask them about it. But first, let me introduce uh, Dirk Wieringa and his colleague, uh, Paul Sturdle. And uh, welcome, guys. Uh, glad you're joining us today. And uh, they've been working on a, they have a, a film that you've got to watch. All of us in UP know where Route 2 is. We most You got to get on it to get most places, to get out of the UP. You're on Route 2 somehow at, at some point. And a lot of people don't, know how far Route 2 goes around America, and we're going to talk about that today. So, Dirk, I'll start with you, and you and Paul can figure out where you want to jump in. Tell us about Route 2 Elsewhere. Okay, Route to Elsewhere is really not about the highway, but it's yes. about the people living along the highway, yes. and I chose it as a project in order to tell the stories of rural America, because the 1,500 miles that I picked which are from the Straits of Mackinac to the Sweetgrass Plains of Montana, five states, are among the most rural areas in America. And, and basically it's about the joys and, and challenges of living in rural America. And just as a quick observation, you, can you tell us anything? I, one of the things we, we write about and talk about at Rural Insights all the time, especially with policymakers, as we say, there is no clear definition of what every rural area looks like, just like there's no if inner the government. Area. You're right. The government does not have a definition. No. They say rural is what's not urban, and then you define, sort of define urban. Um, However... Uh, the way I define it is that you are probably going to be an hour away from a hospital. You're going to probably be an hour away from most uh, services that, that we find in our normal living. And um, so I, I actually use a metrics of 32 people per square mile or less. And the average throughout the route that I'm covering is 10 people per square mile. And, and as you know, in the UP, that would, there are lots of areas that do have health services within an hour. Uh, uh, you could take Marquette or Houghton, mm -hmm. but it depends where in Marquette or Houghton you live. You, you, mm -hmm. In the city of Marquette, you don't have that problem with the immediate suburbs. Mm -hmm. You could be out, out on the border of Delta County, or you could be... Mm -hmm. At Hancock and have to get in. So it's an interesting, uh, it's an interesting. In, in, yeah, in the in 1500 miles that I'm covering, you, because I'm not going to take a small, tiny hospital, but I'm going to take a good sized hospital that's able to handle virtually all major services. And so when I look at it, it's Marquette, uh, Duluth. Grand Forks, Minot, and possibly Williston, North Dakota. And that, that's it. That would have a hospital. Of enough. size enough to do more than just real basic services. So right. in other words, I'm not going to count a munising. Not right. that munising doesn't do a good job and that they're not well right. connected to UP Health, but that uh, if you have a heart attack, and I used to live in Grand Marais, uh, if you have a heart attack in Grand Marais, first of all, they have to send an ambulance from <laughs> a place like right. uh, Unising. They have to then take you to the closest hospital, which is Helen Joy Newberry. Yes. And if they need anything major, they have to then take you another two and a half hours the other way to Marquette. Well, it, it, the only city in the UP that add to that might be Iron Mountain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so but, that, and, and that's that's true. That's Johnson, true. Uh, mm -hmm. There, and they have a new affiliation mm -hmm. with Marshfield. So, it's, yeah, yeah. It's, well, that might be. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll agree with that. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, what were there any people, common denominators, as you looked at 
folks who lived along the, the route that, of the 1,500 miles that you'd like to tell us about, whether were there commonalities that did stick out, jump out? Um, commonalities are that people love where they live, which is easy to see. Um, the other commonality is going to be a much older population than what the national average is. Typically, it's going to have a birth rate that's less than the death or that's less than what the death rate is. Uh, the county that I live in, West Michigan, our birth to death rate is two to one. In the UP, it's less than it's less than even. What about what about the uh, issues of uh, uh, employment besides healthcare? The other social issues. Uh, there uh, em employment is huge. Employment is huge because you're not going to have young people unless they're full time jobs with benefits. And one of the commonalities is because there are so many lower skilled jobs, uh, it's real easy for an employer to hire only part-time. So it's not uncommon for somebody to have four or five or six part-time jobs and absolutely no benefits. So there's not much of a draw to bringing families into an environment like that. We were, we, we've been writing about uh, uh, rural child care issues, uh, after school child care, preschool and the expense of it. And in the UP in our study, at Rural Insights Institute, we found it's like an average of six hundred and seventy-two dollars a month. So some number mm -hmm. like that, uh, and of course that impacts your employment. That impacts mm -hmm. a lot of things. Is that true? You found among the rural? Uh, it, it's it's an issue. However, a couple of towns have dealt with it very well. One being uh, Watford City in North Dakota, and the other being Ashland, Wisconsin. Both of which have, have found, uh, started a nonprofit that actually does child care and adjusts to the income of the parents. Okay, and, and, and they did it and they, and they did it and they did it as a community function. They did not wait for somebody else to do it. Do it. Yeah. I, mm -hmm. I've, I've written a little bit about that, uh, uh, in Marquette and in Houghton uh, and in Sault Ste. Marie, where you have a sizable university. By the way, that's the other mm -hmm. town that you see with healthcare, mm -hmm. substantial healthcare with a few mm -hmm. of them right there. I was actually thinking level one or level two trauma. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. And that would be War Memorial. It's pretty sophisticated. But that the universities and the hospitals, you look at it, you think about it, they could be these nonprofits that provide healthcare, especially since they're the largest employers. Absolutely. Maybe that's something you want to step mm -hmm. up to. Yeah. So, uh, Probably the town along US2 that is really hitting it out of the park on every level is Bemidji in Minnesota. I've been there. And they they have they have just they they hit all the metrics. They hit them all. They have a four-year university, they've got a high good hospital, not top level, but good one. Uh, they have, uh, they, they actually have programs for uh, uh, attracting people from Silicon Valley who are willing to move there. And they actually work with the employers. So they'll work with the Google or they'll work with somebody else. And they, they, they are just unbelievable what they've done. Well, the, the other thing they have is an incredible hockey team. Oh, they do. Yeah. <laughs> and and they the got... built the arena. The city actually built this incredible arena. Oh, I know. And, 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 you know, I've, I've, I've interviewed people in there. And, and it's not only that. I'll bet you that the Detroit Red Wings wouldn't mind moving into there. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. But it's a, but it's a town of 15,000 people. Well, I know. It's not uh, that, you know, it's... Almost, uh, you know, Marquette is 20,000 or 22,000 mm -hmm. with the university. So, I mean, I but, was mm -hmm. I was amazed when I went there. I, I was fascinated by that mm -hmm. city. Commonality uh, that I noticed there that seems to be is that there's a, a pride in the city just right across the board. 
Yeah, and I think that's a big, and that's true in a lot. As you said, people don't want to move out of rural areas. There's this mm -hmm. sense of belonging. Uh, sense uh, of one of the issues, though, in a, in a smaller rural area is an unwillingness to accept any new ideas. Yes, yes. Or to accept new people mm -hmm. coming in. You know, that's you true. Come in, you know, we always talk about in the UP. You, if you're not from the UP, you can never be full Uper. You know, you're, you're not a, you're <laughs> I, I haven't played you know? in Graham Ray for 15 years. And, yeah. uh, you know, yeah. it's 250 people in the middle of the wintertime. And I was lucky if I could get a hello. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. But if you're from there, they know who you are. And, oh, and yeah. What yeah. about, yeah. this leads me to the discussion of, a, uh, I'm sort of fascinated, but the, do you think rural community people who ever have a better understanding of who they are and what it means to be an American or American citizen with your responsibilities and your rights versus in a big city? Is there more cohesiveness or it really is not? It's sort of like America just split. If you would have asked me that five years ago, I might have agreed a little bit more. Uh, but so many of these communities flipped in 2016. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's amazing how they flipped. Um, and so I kind of look at that and, and think they're basically saying, you know, stick this up your you know what to the country. Right. Right. And so, so I, I can see that there's a joint feeling among people uh, in these communities, but I wonder about their understanding of how America works. And, and that would be true, you would say, not just in rural areas, if I'm hearing you right, it'd be true in suburban and, rural and mm -hmm. urban. Yeah, uh, yeah, very much so. What would either one of you, what, what it, when you got all done, what jumped out when you got all finished? You said, now here's something that I didn't, I didn't think I would find out about a rural area. I, I didn't think was involved in it. Well, I, I think the first thing is that I did an amazing amount of research. See, I basically lived on US2 for over a year. So I embedded myself <laughs> back and forth and back and forth because I needed to have all four uh, seasons as part of it. So I had to live the seasons in order to in order to understand. Uh, but also what, what that did was it allowed people to keep seeing me back and forth and back and forth. So in other words, a rancher or a farmer or somebody else in a, 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 a lumber, per, you know, somebody in lumber, they knew what I was up to. They began to trust a little bit more. Uh, and, 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 what jumped out at me with in that experience was that a lot of them had seen major news publications do or networks do stories on their areas, such as the Bakken oil fields out in Western North Dakota. And they, what they found was that a New York Times, let's say, or Fox News or whatever network you want to pick, would basically fly in, they'd find a coffee house. They'd sit down. They'd say, "Tell me what you think." <laughs> but then I can tell them anything. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. And then pack up and go. And then, then they're gone. They're in the next yeah. train out of town. They're like a they're like a uh, fill in minister, you know. <laughs> put, them, put, them, put them on the next train out of town. <laughs> right. Exactly. Uh, Paul, do you do you have anything that you found sort of jumped out at you? Yes. Well, uh, I, I've lived in rural America most of my life. I'm, uh, I live in Hurley, Wisconsin, but I am a native of the Upper Peninsula because I was born at the Newport Mining Company Hospital in neighboring Ironwood. And I was yep. raised in Hurley. And uh, after law school, uh, I chose to return to my hometown, which is an old uh, former mining lumbering community, which has seen uh, better days. Uh, I first saw Root to Elsewhere at its premiere as part of Ember Light Arts Festival in Ironwood, Michigan uh, this summer. And I really enjoyed it. Uh, and I got to know the director, Dirk, 
And so uh, I helped arrange a reshowing of it at the uh, uh, Ironwood Theater in November. And we also had a panel discussion talk back uh, with some of the people who were interviewed in the documentary, as well as my friend Gary Sherman, who was our state representative and a retired Court of Appeals judge, and Dirk was also there. Uh, I really enjoyed the documentary. And one of the things I came across with, and this goes to one of your first questions, is uh, all of the people who appeared in it, who were interviewed in it, really had a sense of place of who they were and where they came from and where they lived and a deep and abiding attachment to the land. Yeah. And one of the things that's interesting about uh, rural America is that if, if you look at the percentages of people who are native born, uh, Iron County, Wisconsin, for instance, is about 98 plus percent native born. And yet uh, people who have lived here all their lives uh, refer to themselves often in terms of their national origin. And yet these are some of the, uh, the most native born populations in America uh, because uh, in the case of a lot of the communities in the Upper Peninsula, uh, they stopped growing uh, in the 1920s when at the same time the immigration gates were closing and they were pretty stable until the 1970s. Yeah, very much very so. Interesting, very. Mm -hmm. uh, can you, uh, uh, if somebody, uh, Derek, wants to watch this, how do they do it? Um, if if they're a member of a if they're if they're if they have PBS passport, okay. so in other words, they've given a donation to PBS. Right. All they have to do is put route to elsewhere in the search bar, and it comes up. Uh, because no we've been on three um, PBS stations so far, and Duluth has just signed up. And so, um, yeah, it's rolling out there. The hope that we have, though, is that actually what people are saying is urban America needs to see this film because Absolutely. they don't know what a right. uh, what a branding is in a, you know, right. they, they, they think the meat that they buy in the store came yeah. from the grocery store. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that was certainly... That was certainly uh, me growing up in Brooklyn, New York. I didn't. Mm -hmm. I just mm -hmm. thought somehow the turkey got put in that package, you know. Uh -huh. so, <laughs> so, right. so, so they can go there, and and uh, uh, mm -hmm. it'd be interesting. In uh, I, I was thinking about you, Bill. It would be interesting to get this shown to the Michigan legislature. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, yes, and their staffs for them mm -hmm. to understand, because uh, that's sort mm -hmm. of what we're about for us is showing mm -hmm. trying to make you understand rural America and the UP. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that. I, I, I agree. Because they, people these days, they either take if, if they're going to go across the country, they're going to fly, and yeah. if they don't fly, they're going to take an interstate, and yeah, they're going to see. Go. And they're never going to see rural America from an interstate because every town at an interstate juncture looks the same. <laughs> right. right. Yeah. So, well, thank you. I, I may uh, I may get back to you and talk to our state reps sure. about getting a show. And we're going to try to do a little urban, excuse me, we're trying to do some rural sessions down in the in legislature about issues. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, independent thinking on it and not at not mm -hmm. lobbying groups and we thought and I this might be really good to, to show uh, tell us a little about before I let you go uh, excuse the background noise tell me a little uh, about your project on uh, documentary looking at rural elderly Americans um, well Paul can maybe go a little bit further into detail on this because uh, Paul has a you know, has been a uh, uh, elder law attorney for his whole career, and he's very well respected across the country. Uh, so I look at it like I would 
as an example, I did a I did a project based in the villages in Florida, 120,000 people, and everybody thinks they're old people, and it's mostly young people, <laughs> and it's mostly young people because old people need young people to take care of them, <laughs> and and so when when you start looking at the needs of rural America, there are incredible opportunities. Uh, yes, and picking up on that, uh, I founded and developed and dedicated my career to elder law in rural America. Uh, we all know that America's population is aging, uh, but the number, the percentages of elderly in rural America uh, are much higher than in the rest of the country. For instance, in Iron County, Wisconsin, almost 34% of the population is over 65. Uh, and in Wisconsin as a whole, that's 17%. So there are twice as many uh, older people in uh, these rural counties than in the rest of the country. So uh, it has an aging population. And one of the purposes of the movie is to help shape public policy and how we deal with uh, the elderly, beginning with the elderly in rural America that we're most familiar with. And in a sense, Route to Elsewhere is a segue into that. Mm -hmm. Very much so. That's great. We'll look for, we will look forward to that very much. Uh, I think uh, uh, one of the things that we, we hear constantly at Rural Insights is this issue of what's happening to uh, to people, the elderly in rural areas, also to vet, elderly veterans. We hear a lot about it. There tend to be more veterans in those areas. So I think we'll look forward to that. And, and I think uh, uh, they will love uh, Route to Elsewhere and go to PBS uh, Passport and take a look at it. It'll, it'll, you'll, it'll be a wonderful, wonderful evening for you to watch. And if they're interested in a DVD, they can go to our website, which is principiamedia.com. Okay, say that one more time for everybody. Uh, principiamedia.com. I and, and it, and, I'm ahead. sorry. No, go ahead. Say. Yeah, principiamedia.com. So, um, and, and it's available there. Great. And that's a great, you get a DVD. Uh, for those mm -hmm. of you under 20, a DVD is a little round thing with a circle in the middle. <laughs> it doesn't come from the air. That's right. That's right. And, 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 and also, we're hoping to have a showing of Root to Elsewhere on my favorite PBS station, WNMU Marquette. So stay great. tuned. <laughs> great, but everybody in the NMU, uh, everybody in the UP gets. That's a great, uh, great, mm -hmm. uh, good, good. And I'll make sure I post that on our on our website. Uh, Wonderful. How they can get it, and also the fact that check out WNMU since it covers the whole UP. Right. Well, gentlemen, yeah. thank you very much. This has been wonderful. I really enjoyed it. And uh, as an elderly person, I'm looking forward to the second document <laughs> about how we live. <laughs> Well, David, keep up the good work. The work you're doing is Thank you. wonderful. Thank yes. you very much. Thank it's you. very nice. Thank you. Both Dirk and Paul, have a great day. Stay warm. <laughs> you too. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Bye. Okay, bye.